In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You are very welcome to this Liturgy of the Word of the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king O god almighty father lord jesus christ only begotten son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud. He spoke with Moses, but took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. When the spirit came down on them, they prophesied, but not again. Two men had stayed back in the camp. One was called Eldad and the other Medad. The Spirit came down on them, though they had not gone to the tent. Their names were enrolled among the rest. These began to prophesy in the camp. The young man ran to tell this to Moses. Look, he said, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Then said Joshua to the son of Nun, who had served Moses from his youth, My Lord Moses, stop them. Moses answered him, Are you jealous on my account? If only the whole people of the Lord were prophets, and the Lord gave his spirit to them all. The word of the Lord. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. So in them your servant finds instruction. Great reward is in their keeping. But who can detect all his errors? From hidden faults acquit me. From presumption restrain your servant, and let it not rule me. Then shall I be blameless, clean from grave sin. A reading from the letter of St. James. An answer to the rich. Start crying. Weep for the miseries that are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting. Your clothes are all eaten up by moths. 
all your gold and your silver corroding away, and the same corrosion will be your own sentence and eat into your body. It was a burning fire that you stored up as your treasure for the last days. Laborers mowed your fields and you cheated them. Listen to the wages that you kept back, calling out. Realize that the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. On earth you have had a life of comfort and luxury, and in the time of slaughter you went on eating to your heart's content. It was you who condemned the innocent and killed them. They offered you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Master, we saw a man who was not one of us casting out devils in your name, and because he was not one of us, we tried to stop him. But Jesus said, You must not stop him. No one who works a miracle in my name is likely to speak evil of me. Anyone who is not against us is for us. If anyone gives you a cup of water to drink just because you belong to Christ, then I tell you solemnly he will most certainly not lose his reward. But anyone who is an obstacle to bring down one of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone round his neck. And if your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off, it's better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell into a fire that cannot be put out. And if your foot should cause you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should cause you to sin, tear it out. It's better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into a hell where their worm does not die, nor their fire go out. The Gospel of the Lord. Two guys were waiting outside of a pub to open. As they were waiting, a funeral passed up the street. One guy said to the other, Whose funeral is that? It's Joe Smith, his mate replied. Ah, poor Joe, said the other guy. Do you know what he died of? Well, I'm not too sure, was the reply, but I don't think it was anything very serious. We could be tempted to say the same about sin, but what Jesus is saying in today's Gospel is that the consequences of treating sin flippantly can put our salvation in jeopardy. These days there are many people, even Catholics, who deny the existence of hell despite it being mentioned several times in today's Gospel. Saint Faustina of the Divine Mercy, whom our Lord appeared to in the 1930s, she was given a vision of hell. Most people who go there, she said, had denied its existence. Once a man told Saint Padre Pio that he didn't believe in hell. You will when you go there, was the reply. All sin is an absence of love. And it's a foretaste of hell to live in a loveless, permanent state. They say that Yorkshire people have a reputation for calling a spade a spade. Well, that's what we must do with sin. Some people say times have changed and we were too hung up on sin in the past. However, God hasn't changed. And he didn't rewrite the gospel for our times. 
Some try to camouflage sin's reality by saying things like, Oh, I'm only human. But that can be a cop-out phrase for not taking sin seriously, whereas the gospel today calls for radical action. To me, the person who is doing battle with sin is always more human and lovable than the person who treats it like For instance, if we abandon the struggle to forgive someone, we're less human than if we forgive them. Some try to mask the reality of sin by dressing it up as something else. Support for euthanasia, for instance, which is gaining ground as we speak, is often described as peaceful release, whereas it's more like ending a life considered to be not worth prolonging. So we can downsize the reality of sin and even blame others for it. But if not repented of, it remains in the soul of the person like an untreated cancer. The effects of sin can be contagious. We can pass it on, we can pass on the bad effects to the next generation. Of the course, the same is also true of goodness and virtue. If mum and dad are married, for instance, there's a better chance their children will follow suit than if they weren't. Jesus sternly warns us in today's gospel about giving scandal to children and taking away their innocence, which is not unheard of these days, especially in the field of education. The Lord says, they would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone round their necks. But the good news is that we can do something about sin. Some of the great saints of the church were less than virtuous, they lived less than virtuous lives in their youth, but with God's grace they turned things around. It would be regrettable to let the grace of repentance go a-begging. The mercy of God is readily available to all who seek it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father in heaven will give good things to those who ask him. We place our needs before him today. Let us pray for our Holy Father the Pope. May the yoke of responsibility laid on him be lightened by divine grace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that we recognize climate as a common good, 
belonging to all and make changes in lifestyle, production and consumption to combat global warming. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocations. Like the apostles, may the young be generous in answering the call of the Master. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the young people making confirmation next Sunday. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, may they grow in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the sick, especially those poorly in our parish, waiting for operations or recovering in hospital. May they be strengthened in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the faithful departed, especially Morgan Peter Sweeney, Mary Murphy and Brian Matthews, who died recently, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and in the week ahead. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray to Mary, who is the refuge of sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Let us now pause and pray for our own intentions. God our Father, listen to our heartfelt prayer for those in need and grant us the graces we need to live in accordance with your will on earth and so merit the place reserved for us in heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.